Daddy Squared. Gay Dad Saved the World. A daily dose of gay dads on the front lines of the global pandemic. With Alex McGann and Jan Dick. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Daddy Squared, Gay Dad Save the World. Well, like, I'm just fearful that people are already sick of us by that point. Well, that's tough because, you know, we're in their podcast feed and they have no choice but to listen to us. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, these gay dads that save the world are not us. Um, they are the wonderful people who we have been interviewing Um And uh, we have someone so interesting today. He's yeah. making coronavirus drugs. Yeah, Ooh. it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Anyway, so uh, you know that I'm a web designer and I also help small businesses with social media presence. And you know that at the beginning of this uh, inter-season podcast, what, we, what we're doing right now, I told you that I don't have work. So usually when, I, when it happens to me, like when our days where I feel like I, things are not going my way and things are really down, I turn to YouTube. <laughs> and I've discovered <laughs> hypnosis on YouTube. And guys, this is super, super amazing. Um, so there, basically, there are hypnosis about everything that you want. So usually what I do is like hypnosis for gratitude. And I think that it's the way of thinking about things that you already have. It makes you, it keeps you on the energy of getting more things, you know, after you're grateful for what you have. And what's been going on since you started that process? So I just want to say that I've been overwhelmed with new projects yeah. since I started. And I started to think about a week ago again, when I actually remember this, um, I'm not, it's not, I can't promise it will happen to everybody, but um, it doesn't hurt to try. And also I think that it's a, it's a very good way of relaxing. So every day before I go to sleep, I search on YouTube, uh, hypnosis for gratitude, hypnosis for whatever. There's so many about, so many of them. Uh, lack of confidence, stuff like this. It's mostly gratitude that I do. And, um, and I listen to it and I usually also fall asleep with it. And that's fine too. And, um, and I don't know. I think it's working, Alex. I well, know that you are a little bit uh, suspicious of these things. No, look, I, let, let me say this. If, if our listeners are not already aware, there is a pretty dramatic difference between me and Jan when it comes to the spiritual. Um, what Only I mean, when it comes to that? I well, think the, also the, because of your foul taste in music. <laughs> and I was just about to say, the oh. song Opposites Attract by Paul Abdul well, was written about us. Right, foul music, but it's correct. <laughs> um, but no, but, but here's what I'll say. I think that we have an overlap in the things that we find compelling. I don't really see kind of magic the way you do. I am much more oriented around the scientific and the kind of... provable so when you get into the world of hypnosis well hypnosis is about about speaking to a person's conscious or, or semi-conscious and sort of helping adjust the way a person sees the world that is a scientific thing and I ain't got no problem with that now what I am a little bit concerned about is you're picking things from YouTube and so what you don't know is after they've walked you down the seven steps to you know being open to suggestion and your subconscious if she doesn't say send us your questions credit card number at the <laughs> following email address like we don't I, know i didn't find myself doing that well, we well do, not that do you it. know of we have to wait till the credit card bill comes this month <laughs> i uh listen i think that uh, i think that the, the whole hypnosis thing is fascinating because of we because of the fact that we have so many perceptions about it that i don't think it's true You know, it's not like you be, you stop being yourself. You're, you're pretty aware of what's happening. It's not like, uh, you know, you don't remember and then you wake up and, and, you know, things are changing. Yeah, look, agreed. Once again, it's I don't think... It's not like in the movies. I don't, think this is, I don't think this is about mind control. I don't think it's about magic. I think it is, is ultimately about the idea that during our waking hours, we have so much stimulus that's coming in, whether it's television or our kids or, oh, I don't know, somebody's podcast or something like that. It's very hard to take the time to focus inward. And hypnosis, I think, is ultimately about the idea of getting somebody else to help guide you on focusing inward. And I think that's awesome. I got no problem with it. I want to record hypnosis in my You mean voice. you want to make my, your own? Yeah. 
I'm relatively certain that while I'm sleeping, my husband is whispering things into my ear that, you know. Well, if anybody wants hypnosis in Israeli accent, please let me know. <laughs> Hello at daddysqr.com. Um, today we're calling New York. Alex, and this is one of the most fascinating interview we're going to do, I think, in this whole season. It's uh, Kevin. He's, um, he's making drugs. In, <laughs> yeah. Re Regeneron. 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 Regeneron is a company that makes drugs, I assume? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, let's call him and, uh, and see how he contributes to the fight against coronavirus. Hello. Kevin? Hey, guys. Oh. oh. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you just fine. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Um, what we'd love to do is ask you to tell us a little bit about what your work is and how your work has changed um, as a result of this pandemic. Sure. Um, so I work for a biopharmaceutical company. Um, I work in large-scale manufacturing, which means that I um, produce the drugs that we have on the market at my company. Um, specifically I work in purification. So all of our drugs that we make are made from living cells. Um, they're antibody drugs. So I work in the purification process of that. And I work, um, in a very controlled and clean environment. We work in clean rooms. So we have to be, um, fully gowned up, you know, face mask, hair net, all, all that type of stuff. Um, what has changed, um, the most for me is I would say, 90% or more of my company is working from home. Um, we work on a very large site. So it's almost like a ghost town here right now. Right. Um, it's a little bit strange, but um, my department and a few other departments are still on site. Um, and the biggest thing that um, I've had to get used to is probably the social distancing part of it. Um, we are really putting an emphasis on keeping everyone six feet apart um, which is hard for me because I'm a very social person. Um, I love, uh, you know, hugs and I can't do that with all my coworkers. You know, um, you see your coworkers more than your family a lot of times. So, you know, not being able to get within six feet of them or be able to have con normal conversations has probably been the hardest part for me. Sure. And yeah. so before the pandemic though, I guess my question would be how much of your, of your work day was spent in those crazy outfits where you're completely covered and all that uh, versus, you know, because I doubt you're hugging people when you're in, a, you know, a f fully gowned up in a lab, right? So right, right. what was the balance before and has it changed now? So um, not, has, not a lot has changed in terms of my work. Um, I would say we're in the process areas um, gowned up for probably 70 to 80% of our work day. But we work in small groups of, um, I would say, five to eight people that, you know, you're working with for six hours straight sometimes. Um, so you're always, you know, around each other, communicating, talking. So that hasn't changed in the process area. But outside of when we're actually making the drugs, that's where the adjustment is. You know, even in um, our cafeterias, they have the chairs set up six feet apart so you can't <laughs> even sit next to each other. Right. So that's a major change for me. I'm guessing that when you go out these days to whatever, the supermarket or wherever you go and you see people in their masks and gloves, it almost makes you laugh from how light that is compared to what you do in your day-to-day -day job. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's not even like um, a weird thing for me to see people in masks. It's actually like a little bit normal for me. <laughs> right. Because that's what we do all day. So, yeah, that hasn't like surprised me or, you know, been weird for me at all right one more question about about the work um has the emphasis of projects that you're on etc actually changed uh radically as a result of trying to pursue drugs or manufacture drugs specific to this epidemic or are you still on the same kind of uh a roadmap that you were on before so it has changed a little bit. Um, there's some things that I can and can't talk about, of course, but my of company um, is actually making um, an antibody cocktail for um, coronavirus. So the emphasis has been on that. Um, we've put a big emphasis on that. We're trying to get um, our drug out the door um, by summertime. Got so um, 
there has been a big emphasis on that. Well, we're very supportive of cocktails of all <laughs> kinds. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, myself cool. as well. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, let's go uh, to to your home. Uh, we want to know like what you have at home. Yeah, what your, who's, your family who's, situation. who's the family? Tell us about it. Sure. So myself and my husband have been married since 2014. Um, we actually got married in Cape Cod. Um, we're both from New York, um, but um, we got married in Cape Cod. We have uh, twins, one boy and one girl, who are three years old. They just turned three in April. Um, our story is a little bit similar to your guys um, because we have we both have twins that are around the same age. Yeah. Um, we went through the surrogacy process. Um, we did IVF. So um, our surrogate um, was amazing, um, as well as our um, IVF clinic. Um, we actually were very blessed and lucky. Um, you hear a lot of stories, but um, everything worked out on our first shot. Um, wow, yeah. We both put in one embryo. One was mine. One was my husband's. Hope for the best. And they both took. And, you know, three years ago, we had our twins. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you got married the same year as we did. You have yeah. uh, twins. That's amazing. Um, That's can, pretty funny. Yeah. So at their age now, um, were they in a, a preschool or anything yet when the pandemic started? Yeah, they were, um, they were in a, uh, preschool daycare is actually, um, pretty much right in the middle of my, and my husband's work. Um, and that's, that's been tough. They, they actually are at the age where they love school. They love their teachers. They love right. seeing their friends. So, um, they've adjusted pretty well, but they still talk about, you know, when am I going to go back to school? When am I going to see my friends? Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, which is surprising at such a young age, but, um, you know, they're at a, a critical time in their life where they are learning so much. So that's, so that's been the tough part. You know, you can only teach them so much at home. You try to do your best, but they are actually, you know, learning a lot, taking a lot in. So that's been pretty tough. How are you guys managing the two of them, um, during the day? So, uh, my husband is working from home. He's a teacher. Um, so he is home with them 24 seven. So, um, you know, props to him because I don't necessarily know if I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, he's home with them for the most part and he's keeping them home just because we don't want to, you know, send them to a school and be exposed to other people right now. Is yeah. that even an option right now? Are the schools open? Yeah. I see. Yes. So public schools are not open, but their, um, their daycare preschool is open still. I see. Um, so we did have that option. So we were lucky, um, for that, but we're choosing to keep them home. With all of this and the challenges that are associated and et cetera, can you share with us any of the silver linings, any of the things that you feel like you've, you've, uh, been surprised by during this pandemic? I don't know if I'm surprised by it, but, um, you know, I'm happy to see everyone supporting each other, um, from my work to, you know, friends and family. Um, I think personally there's been an emphasis on, you know, mental health well-being, which is great because, you know, a lot of people don't acknowledge that I've always been an advocate for mental health days. And if you need a day off, just say you need a mental health day. You don't need a physical illness to call out of work. Right. And I'm lucky to have an employer that is very supportive of that. They've told me, you know, if you get burnt out, just let us know and you can have the day off. So I think it's been great that it's been, you know, brought up more and talked about that, you know, mental health is a big thing, especially during this time. Yeah, completely. When was the last time you and your husband, your kids had a good laugh? Right before I left for work today, probably. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's great. They, as you, as you know, with your kids, you know, you never know what's going to come out of their mouth. Um, <laughs> but one of the, one of probably the, some of the most fun we've had is when we, um, you know, listen to music on Alexa, they love their Alexa oh, yeah. and they're always, you know, asking for random songs. Right, um, right now their current favorite artist is Nicki Minaj. So, Oh, oh yeah. We're a big imagine. Nicki household. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you can imagine three-year-old twins, you know, singing Nicki Minaj and dancing around around to that that's always pretty entertaining for us <laughs> yes one of our kids used to stomp up and down the yard in uh in preschool saying um oh my god look at her butt <laughs> which the, te the teachers really enjoyed 
Um, oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we, we, we insist on finishing with the most important question of, of all, of course, uh, which is, can you divulge to us the worst thing that you have eaten in the last, I don't know, several weeks? I mean, dig deep, please. The worst thing, I don't know if I have a worst thing, but you know, I have my days. If I have a bad day at work, a bad day at home that I just binge and just go all out. So, um, we're actually lucky because at my work, um, it's catered by a catered company, catering company. Um, so food is provided for us and, you know, it hasn't always been the best food every day, but they really stepped up their game last week. And, um, the first day that, you know, they brought out some good food, they had cheeseburgers and <laughs> I don't want to tell you, I don't want to tell you how many cheeseburgers I had. No, 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 no. I want say, you to I tell least, us. I at least have them for breakfast, lunch, and an afternoon snack. Let's just say that. There's a cocktail for you. <laughs> yeah, all right. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, are, the kids are in the same class, by the way? They are. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what's going to happen um, when they get to kindergarten, but um, for now, they're in the same class in preschool. Right. Um, yeah, that's what we we did the same class the first, the first year, year, and then we split them up the second year. Yeah, um, but, but how that many, out for you guys? It was good. For, I think. Yeah, for us because uh, because I think uh, the personality of their kids just screamed screamed for it to happen. But they the, need the they, teacher didn't recommend that. I guess she did. Well, whatever. The, the point is that it's been it's been good for one of the kids because he needs his own space to breathe because the other one's personality is too big. Um, yeah, so, I hear that a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's it's been good. It's been yeah. good. Um, All right, Kevin. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to do this, um, and thank you, of course, for what you're doing during during this incredibly we'll difficult keep our time. Fingers crossed for the cocktail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Take care you. now. Bye bye. All right, you too. Bye-bye. That's great.